All right, we finally got our tiny house moved to our property. I had a fellow who lives in Crestview, who's my best friend, one of them, and he got a couple guys that do construction, heavy equipment, and got a couple trucks and a trailer, pulled my shed over. See, we're getting our fence put up. I prime those and paint them with two coats of oil paint while they're a little bit wet so they'll last longer. I'll just cut them off when I pull the wire. Back here's where they put our septic tank. We've been trimming trees back here. We got these trees. I don't know what kind they are, but I call them weed trees. They're everywhere and they choke out all the other trees that we have. So what I do is I go ahead and thin them out and leave trees that I want. And it gives them a lot more sunlight so they grow faster and they look prettier that way. I started on the fence going over toward the barn. I haven't painted most of them. That one that's green, I was going to use a temporary fence for the dogs, but it was going to be too much trouble, more than it was worth, so we just went ahead and started putting all the posts down. I got to let them dry out a couple days, then I'll get those primed. I just concreted them in yesterday. I'm using metal line posts in between the wood posts. 4x4s, Lowe's and Home Depot and everybody here has lost their freaking mind. Last time I bought them two months ago they were $9.95 and now they're $16.95. So these uh, metal posts here are only about five bucks a piece and I'm painting them also. Because they, uh, when you pick them up they're already starting to rust. And the piles of trees everywhere, I let the leaves fall off, let them turn brown, let the leaves fall off to help the soil. We're going to get probably 10 to 14 loads of wood shavings from a local business that does uh, high-end molding and stuff like that. They sell it for $7 a yard, which is a bargain, because I've got to get some topsoil here. i got grass finally growing. I don't know what kind that is, but it's growing like crazy. And got the pump house done, of course. Right, now, our tiny house did survive... The hurricane uh, our shed got blown over and blue tarp is due to hurricane michael but i have uh three on each side now we took the axles and stuff off so they can't call it an rv our county they call them rvs if they got wheels on them if they take them off then they're a permanent structure they may want to come out and inspect my anchors but uh also underneath i don't know if you can see it or not I do uh, cross angles because I learned from the hurricane. Oop, about fell over. Learned from the hurricane that they like to shove these things over. I got another one I got to put over here, but I've got to cut through that fender well. I got to cut that fender off. But if you got a tiny house, you better tie it down. Uh, ours, when it happened, I was using hollow eight by sixteen blocks all the way around and when it pushed over it broke them and the whole thing dropped eight inches but luckily the shed not the shed but the uh deck was tied down and uh when it pulled over now my deck's all bolted and lag screwed and everything like that it's pretty tight but uh it kept the place from falling over that was a bad storm broke all the blades off my ceiling fans blew water through my air conditioner and every every side of the door was water was blowing in we we're only about a half mile where all the uh, railroad cars got blown over and there's the anchors I use I use four foot trailer anchors and I try not to have any fasteners so I just loop it over the frame that we built it on then I don't have any fasteners now on the shed I'm going to use the ones that come in like six foot links with a uh, metal hook on it and uh, do a cross under each side and go straight down to an anchor but I've got to move this thing over it was set in the wrong position because her trailer was too big so I got to twist that thing around 90 degrees that's gonna be a son of a bitch to do but we're starting to do forestry management we got to cut all these weed trees down and try to get it where it looks better I just don't want a lot of big piles of this stuff laying around when we got fire season but that's fixing to be over after the hurricane season then we can start burning this stuff we got a place where we burn it 
and we're going to cut down as many pine trees. I got a little one over there. I've got two up front that are small. I can cut down. I've got some back here. I'm going to cut them down. I'm gonna probably leave the water oaks and I got a couple of kind of other oaks and I'm going to leave that sand pine. I think they call them short leaf pines too. I'm going to leave that because they're pretty trees and it's far away from my septic tank that it won't get in my drain field. And I'm going to put that stuff in there to kill roots in case something decides to get in there. But it's been nice out here. Just this yellow sand, nothing likes to grow in it and it gets hot as hell if you're barefooted. I did want to add something about tie downs. I stayed in my tiny house during the hurricane and it was a Cat 5. They called it a Cat 5, Cat 4 to help out the uh, insurance companies. Then they're deductible, yeah, everybody's deductible applied, but it was a category five. And these, uh, like I said, these anchors held it down. So uh, if you built these things right, mine got through a category five. I don't see why anybody else's couldn't. But you gotta strap it down and you gotta bolt your deck together. Don't just use uh, screws, bolt it all together, through bolts, lag bolts, everything. So uh, that was a hell of an experience sitting there watching the damn wind blow water all the way around the door. I was there. My dad had died a couple months earlier, like I said before, and he had a shitload of towels, and I got them. And I'm glad I did, because the way it was blowing in, I had to make a dam out of a towel until it got completely drenched, and then I threw it into the uh, shower. And I did that until the storm was over, and I put a bucket underneath the air conditioner, so no water got in and damaged anything. Uh, the front left anchor did pull out it was uh, concreted in and it still pulled it out and busted the strap so that, that tells you how bad that wind was and it came in two directions blew my shed over one direction and then came on the front side and blew that direction that's what like I said those uh, box cars the uh, railroad had blew over and we were like I said half a mile to it so I can't emphasize enough to strap these damn things down uh, when ours fell over the plumbing broke which you know that was the only damage we had so uh, this time I put a rubber boot there hooking it to the septic tank so if we get a bad enough storm it wants to rock a little bit I'm gonna do that on the electrical I'll put some uh, one inch liquid tight and one inch flexible line for the water going in because I don't know if these cross strappings are going to do what I want to. I think they will. I don't need this thing going side to side wanting to fall off the blocks. So, uh, like I said, I'll have one more hooked to that. But you got to tie these things down. Uh, there was something I did in the equipment shelter that I never mentioned. Uh, when I first hooked the dryer up, we hadn't moved it yet. And I thought, wow, that's great. It's pulling out a lot of air out of the dryer and I got to thinking, well, hell, that's going to pull air out of my damn house. So what I did is I put a uh, six inch pipe over to a vent and I taped it off real good because I didn't, if uh, gas got loose, I didn't want it getting sucked into where the dryer's at. Now I've got a uh, combustible gas detector down there and they're loud so we'd hear that. Then I have a smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector up there, which is wired to everyone in the house. So if it goes off, they all go off and a crazy thing about living in here in the country you'll never believe it but we have AT&T fiber optic cable it was half the price as Comcast and its upload and download speeds are exactly the same I've been noticing on average about 600 megabytes per second because I have to go through other networks if it were to stay in a fiber optic I'd be getting closer to a thousand megabytes per second which is crazy fast and uh, on this, I'm going to do a video on living with an Easy Tankless 101 because uh, I think people that get them don't know what they're in for if you're going to use it like this because this is not the intended use of these uh, 101s. They're strictly supposed to be portable. So you have to make some accommodations uh, for the water heater to get it work where you like it. So uh, I'm going to go over that because it's not as easy as you think and that water filter there I'm gonna take the filter out because I got one at the well and I think it's two of them there is lowering my water pressure a little bit too much so I'm gonna take that one out and just leave it empty and see how it works out because I've got one for the sand there's nothing coming up through that well except sand and you can capture that pretty easy now in the city water I changed it a couple times and that thing was just full of all kinds of crap I don't know how they pump the crap 
they did through those water lines, but it was freaking disgusting. You know, and I, we had stopped drinking city water for a long time because our big brown and white pit bull got kidney stones. So uh, we started giving him distilled water and a special food. So I know that damn water from the city was doing something awful, which is a shame because we almost lost them getting plugged up. So this is just something one to show back here. Uh, I don't think I ever, like I said, I don't think I ever showed it completely set up. So uh, that's where my washer and dryer hooks up. So that access plate I'll take off when we pull the water, not the water, but the uh, washer and dryer out, I'll pull that access out and make me a new one and cover it up. And then where the, everything hooks up, I'll just leave it there. That's no big deal, it's not in the way. And these uh, trailer vents work uh, amazingly well on septic tanks. I've had people say, well, these Trailer vents won't work on a septic tank, but they, they work real well. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna vent it out. I thought I was gonna have to vent it out, but I'm not going to. So there you go. We weren't used to living out in the country. And uh, one of the weird things where we live, it's called the I-10 corridor. We get hot weather, hotter weather than inland because we're an hour away from the Gulf but we get cooler nights but every afternoon we get this crap we get uh some lightning thunderstorms then it clears up it's kind of like living in tampa any of y'all live in tampa you know what i talk about those uh late afternoon showers but we got insects and birds out the wazoo we're supposed to have bears i haven't seen a bear yet and we've heard coyotes but we've seen deer and rabbits and we got every kind of lizard out here uh it's crazy. Frogs, toads, lizards. We got all kinds of good critters, and they eat. Of course, they eat the bugs. So I'm not gonna mess with them. Actually, I'm gonna make some uh, lizard condos out of those flat blocks that I put underneath my piers, and I'm just gonna put a three-quarter inch pressure-treated piece of lumber, and I'm gonna stack five or six high, and then make a smaller one, and then they're even smaller, so they'll have somewhere to go when it gets too hot or too cold. All right. Now we've got this giant pine tree that fell over. I'm not going to try to cut it down. It's already starting to rot. When it starts to fall out of the trees, there's a branch over there on that oak tree that's holding that uh, part, bottom part of it up. When it gets rotten to a point, I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and just let it drop to the ground. But I'm going to let it dry out a little bit. And then, of course, i got these pine trees i got to deal with. They're nothing but lightning rods and house destroyers. Alright, this is the update on us moving. As always, y'all have a good one.